On Saturday, April 27th, residents began sifting through the rubble after a tornado plowed through suburban Omaha, Nebraska, demolishing homes and businesses as it moved for miles through farmland and into subdivisions, then slamming an Iowa town. Dozens of reported tornadoes wrecked havoc Friday in the Midwest, causing a building to collapse with dozens of people inside and destroying and damaging at least 150 homes in Omaha alone. But no fatalities were reported, and fewer than two dozen people were treated at Omaha area hospitals, said Dr. Lindsay Hughes, health director of the city's Douglas County Health Department. Neighboring communities reported a handful of injuries each. The tornado damage started Friday afternoon near Lincoln, Nebraska. An industrial building in Lancaster County was hit, causing it to collapse with 70 people inside. Several were trapped, but everyone was evacuated, and the three injuries were not life-threatening, authorities said. One or possibly two tornadoes then spent around an hour creeping toward Omaha, leaving behind damage consistent with an EF3 twister with winds of 135 to 165 miles per hour, said Chris Franks, a meteorologist in the National Weather Service's Omaha office. Ultimately, the twister slammed into the Elkhorn neighborhood in western Omaha, a city of 485,000 people with a metropolitan area population of about 1 million. James Stennis only moved to the Elkhorn neighborhood about a year ago. We barely made it to the basement and then heard the destruction going on upstairs. And, wow, yeah. Uh, it was just taking it day by day. I mean, um, you come upstairs, uh, and see that you have no house from emerging from the basement. You're, you know, you're home, but you're actually homeless. You know, so um, just the gravity of all that is, uh, is something to hold. Oh, but you know, if you have a strong faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you can you can make it through it. So, and we're going to make it through. It. Firefighters worked into the evening to make sure no one was trapped. By Saturday morning, the sounds of chainsaws filled the air there. Lumber from the damaged homes lay in piles. Fences were knocked over and the trees were skeletal, missing most of their branches. Stacy Rowe surveyed the damage to what was supposed to be her forever home, which was not even two years old. When the tornado hit, they were at the airport picking up a friend who was supposed to spend the night. Probably utter dread. Just, yeah. The sinking feeling this was our forever home and we've moved twice in the last two years and we were supposed to be done. And we came home and there was no home to really come to. We're alive. I mean, things can be replaced. One of the volunteers here said actually there was stuff from this neighborhood being found in Blanco, Iowa. So I, I have, I had vintage family photos that are still unaccounted for. I'd like to find those, um, but we're, we're alive. Things can be replaced. Power outages peaked at 10,000, but they had dropped to 4,300 by morning. Formal damage assessments are still underway, but the states plan to seek federal help. A second tornado then passed over Epley Airfield on the eastern edge of Omaha, destroying four buildings with 32 privately owned planes inside. No one was hurt, and the passenger terminal was not hit. The airport has resumed operations, although access to areas used by non-commercial pilots is limited, so crew can clean up the mess, the airfield said in a news release. After hitting the airport, the storm moved into Iowa, taking aim at the small town of Minden. 40 to 50 homes were completely destroyed. Two injuries were reported, but none were life-threatening. Even as the National Weather Service worked to evaluate the damage, the forecast for Saturday was ominous. It issued tornado watches for parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and Iowa.